Uh, it's time for another quick take, ladies and gentlemen. And for the second time in 2017, I have the pleasure of sitting in this chair and saying Roger Federer has done it again. Another major title, this time at Wimbledon, the 19th slam of his career he breaks the record his eighth career wimbledon passing pete sampras it took just an hour 41 minutes six three six one six four victory over marin Cilic. he also becomes the first man to win wimbledon without dropping a set since beyond borg in 1976 class personified in every way the most beautiful game we've ever seen Roger Federer does it again. Uh, just a pleasure to watch every single time. Um, and ultimately, before I get into the match specifically, something just big picture in a tournament defined by who could stay healthy, 35-year-old Roger Federer prevails. Djokovic couldn't stay healthy. Murray couldn't stay healthy. Chilich couldn't stay healthy. Nick Kyrgios couldn't stay healthy. 35-year-old Roger Federer. Takes care of his body, puts in the hard work, as he said after the match, with the physio in the gym, and, and he is rewarded for it. It was a lot more straightforward than I thought it would be. Um, and it was a it was weird vibes from this match, uh, especially on Marin Cilic's side of the court. Let's start with the first set. Uh Federer chooses to receive. This was interesting. Uh immediately Federer, to me, what that said is for, based on his meetings with Chilich in the past, Federer thought that Chilich might be overwhelmed by the moment. That's the only reason he would want Chilich to serve first, uh, you know, because he thought that with with Chilich's nerves, the nerves that come at the very beginning of a Grand Slam final, uh, you know, that would be the only reason you would want to put the ball in the hands of Marin Chilich serving first. So that was interesting move by Federer. Kind of, it it told me that Federer thought that Chilich might have a nerve issue. Uh, Chilich did hold the first serve, uh, his first service game of the match, um, and it was actually Federer who faced the first break point at two one. Federer served at thirty forty, and Chilich missed a pedestrian backhand into the net. Uh, it seemed to frustrate him a little bit more than it probably should have. Because at 2-all, the very next game, Chilich finds himself down love 30, makes a routine forehand error, saves the next two break points, and at 30-40, Chilich's feet get stuck on the backhand wing. He reached for a backhand, and he put it right into the net. Look out for this. This is a, this is a telltale sign of someone who's a little bit nervous and overwhelmed. When your feet stop moving, when, when it's almost like your feet just got stuck in, in quicksand for a second there, right before your shot, when you see guys reaching for the ball, obviously professional players who, you know, have great footwork ordinarily, uh, we saw this multiple times by Marin Cilic. The first set ends with a Cilic double fault. These things matter. These things weigh on the mind. So he couldn't, that transition between the first and the second set, that changeover was... You know, there was no positivity there for Marin Cilic. And with the considering how the first set played out, my thoughts, just my thoughts, before I knew anything about an injury, I was like, you know what? Cilic just looked overwhelmed and overcome by the size of the moment. That's what it seemed like to me. In the second set, at 0-1, it's 30-all. Cilic misses uh, an easy backhand. And at 30-40, break point, his feet get stuck again. And he reaches for another backhand. Another break by Federer. Go back and, and watch watch these points. Watch these break points. Watch Chilich's feet stop and watch him reach for these backhands. At 0-3, love 3, Chilich calls for a trainer. And that's when he, he breaks down in tears. I think at that point... He, he just realized that in, in probably the biggest opportunity of his, his career, aside from that U.S. Open final against Nishikori, but this probably felt even bigger for him. I think at that changeover, he realized or, or he resigned to himself that he was not going to be able to make this a competitive match. And, you know, that's, that's an emotional thing for Chilich. I've never seen, I've never seen that. 
The only time I've seen someone really cry at a changeover was the 2009 U.S. Open final. After Del Potro lost the fourth set, he was crying during the changeover, and he came back, won the fifth set, won the U.S. Open against Roger Federer. Other than that, that was the first time I've ever seen anyone really cry in the middle of a match during a changeover. At 1-4, another break comes Federer's way when Chilich stones a half volley and a push bot volley. Back-to-back -back points, neither of them were even close. And at this point, all the air was sucked out of the match. I want to talk about playing an injured opponent. This is not an easy thing to do. In fact, I'll go even further and say this is a very, very difficult thing to do. Especially for young players. A couple things can happen. One, you start thinking a lot about your opponent, not a lot about yourself. And that's never a good thing. That is when your game can deteriorate, when you're just not focused on your own shot making, when you're paying too much attention in the middle of a rally to how your opponent is moving and how your opponent is hitting the ball. That's when you forget, to ha that's when you forget how to hit the ball. Sometimes you get much too passive and, and you're expecting errors from your opponent and they just don't come. You know, it's almost like, yeah, I'm injured, but I'm, I can hit this forehand, I can hit this backhand, I can put this ball away, and, and you just kind of shell up, and you stop playing your aggressive game because you're just expecting your opponent to give it to you. There can be other times where if your opponent has a, an injury that is affecting their movement, that you're not giving yourself enough margin, and you're, you're focusing too much on trying to make your opponent run, all of a sudden, you're not giving yourself enough margin on the lines. Uh, you're, you're attacking when you should be trading, and you're making a lot of errors. Another thing is you can get extremely frustrated. Why is this still close? You know, he's injured. You, why, why am I not killing him? Why am I having trouble? Why am I losing any points? Playing someone injured can be very, very difficult. Playing an injured opponent can be very, very difficult. Federer... 35 years old, experienced, weathered, this guy, and, and he did allude to it in his post-game uh, post talk on the court. He, he's done this so many times before. He handled it perfectly. I saw no change in Federer's game from the changeover at Love 3 when Chilich first called the trainer for the rest of the match when Chilich, you know, clearly at this point, was not moving as well as he could. Who, you know, Chilich's mind was distracted. His compete level was low. Federer's game didn't change a bit. He was still aggressive. He still made Chilich work for everything. It was a beautiful, beautiful uh, sign of veteranism by Roger Federer. And I may have just made up a word, but I don't care. Third set, I gotta say, I think Chilich. Let's kind of all the emotion, all that negative, you know, ugly, remorseful emotion out. And he starts to get more positive, and I think he kind of loses himself on the court in a good way. He stops thinking about the magnitude of the moment and that he's probably going to lose. Um, and Chilich, so I think mentally he got back in it, but still in that third set, he was showing no ability to hit on the move. You know, no running forehand, no running backhand. At 3-all, 15-30, a lollipop sitting forehand, Chilich misses it. Error. 15-40, cross-court chip and by Federer, and Chilich runs around it and misses his favorite shot, uh, the inside-out forehand. You know, you see these things, and, and you just know that it's not going to be Chilich's day. Federer, no mercy, by the way. Come on! He yells. He gave him no breathing room because he knows how dangerous Chilich is. And he realizes that, you know, let's say Federer plays a poor, uh, a poor third set. The crowd is back into it. Chilich is feeling good again. Maybe adrenaline kicks in. His foot feels fine. It rains. The roof closes. You got a different match. Federer, unbelievable recognition. Unbelievable showing of killer instinct by Roger Federer. He says, come on, after getting that break at 3-all. And he knows he's playing a wounded bear. And Federer is class personified. But you got to do what you got to do. Excellent job by Federer there. He serves it out. And the rest is history. Roger Federer. I'll say it again. Because the, the words 
feel so good leaving my mouth. A 19th Grand Slam for Roger Federer. A couple years back, Federer said, my goal is to hit 20 majors. And a lot of people laughed at him. I certainly didn't laugh because I have too much respect for the guy. But I did not think it was going to happen. Congratulations, Roger Federer. Steve Flink interview coming up. Hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you next time.